Hi, so today I'm going to explain what I mean by check a fuse for power, all right? There's two things you're looking for when you check a fuse. One, is it blown? Or two, does it actually have power? All right, when you're dealing with fuses, they come in all kinds of different amperages and sizes. All right, there's a 5 amp. The number on the top is the amperage. It's how much current the fuse can hold. When the fuse goes bad, that strap in the middle will blow and it'll leave a black mark. Look at Here's a 20 amp mini. 20 amp normal one, which they actually call mini, which is weird. And then this one that they call like a maxi, all right? So there's three different sizes of 20 amps. So you got to see what you have before you can actually go to a part store and get one that you need, all right? And then there's little tabs at the top that you can touch to verify there's power going across. There they go, 30 amps, 40 amps. And then inside some pre-fuse boxes, we got strap style that you can't really, you can't see if they're blown. You've got to check them. See if there's power on this side and power on this side. And I'll show you what I mean. So I told you to check your fuses and make sure they have power. You say, but I checked all the fuses already. Well, here's the difference. So the battery is, or the car is off. This fuse has power on this terminal and that terminal, indicating the fuse is okay and it's not blown from side to side. All right. And since the car is off, that means this fuse is battery powered, meaning it has power all the time. Okay, then you come to a fuse like this, there's power there, and power there, so that one's still good. No power here, and no power there, all right? So that can be for two reasons. Reason number one, that one only has power when the key is turned on. One of these relays will turn on the rest of the fuses. Or the second option is, that fuse will only have power when you operate what that fuse uh, protects. So if you operate the horn, the relay will click on and then the fuse will get power. So you have to know when that fuse is supposed to get power. I get questions all the time saying, this fuse don't have power. Uh, I think it's, you know, bad or I think there's a problem here. Well, you don't know when the fuse is supposed to have power. You got to make sure you know when. Most fuse charts will show if it's circuit 30 for battery circuit 15 for key on or circuit 87 for engine on uh, but notice all the different relays i'll also tell you how to jump a relay because i probably told you we need to check the relay or jump the relay so when you pull these up all right so here's a relay okay on the bottom there's numbers by the terminals this one says one three two and five now, based on the size of the terminal, it's easy to tell which is the control side and which is the power side. So, one of these is going to have power, and one of these is going to have power. When this one gets ground, it's going to close from this terminal to this terminal, activate a magnet, which is going to send power from this terminal to that terminal. All right, so anytime we check a relay position, or, or we check in here, one small one will have power, and one big one will have power. All right, so let me test that right now, if this will even fit in there, okay? All right, so there's our power, all right? And because the car is off, one of these probably won't have power, and I don't want to mash this in there, so I'll, I'll leave it be. But look at any relay, and it's easy to tell which one's the control and which one's the, the consumption side. And also on the side, it tells you the numbers. Now, every relay has two different numbers. It's either one, three, five, and two, or one, two, three, four, five, if there's a, a center terminal. Uh, it'll also tell you 30 and 87. So 30 is usually battery power. And when 85 and 86 get power and ground, it could be either or, one can be power or ground, depending on the car. It will close the magnet or activate the magnet, which will close the circuit and allow power from 30 to 87. So when I say I want you to jump a relay, you are basically going to take a wire and you're going to insert it from that terminal to that terminal and whatever we're trying to jump should kick on. We're going to force the operation. All right, and then I'll show you what's inside a relay. All right, so I pop the top off. They usually always crack and break. All right, so here's the inside of a relay. Okay, it's a big solenoid or coil of wire, all right, which creates magnetic attraction. And look at this movable piece. See that piece moving there? All right, so basically, this strap that's attached to the braided wire is going to have power, and once the magnet closes, it's going to activate power and send to that terminal. 
So we're basically taking power from one terminal and applying it to the other one. You can usually tell which one it is because again, let's look at the number, three and five. So on a three and on a, on a one, two, three, four, five relay, three and five will be the control side, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the power side. One and two will be the control, and then power will go from three to five or five to three, whichever way it's wired up, all right? But if you have a uh, 85, 86, 87, and 30, it's no different because all of them show the same CM in parentheses, 85, 86, 87, and 30. Some relays will have an 87A. There's some crazy older relays that have about eight or nine terminals in them, and they're all labeled for what they are. But just you can tell how it works by looking at it. It shows you that two and one, which is 85 and 86, when they get power and ground, they activate the solenoid, which closes the relay, and the relay is normally open because of the way that it's shown in a diagram. Some relays are normally closed where they send power there until the, the, uh, re the relay is activated and it disengages power. So that's how a relay works. So if you want to activate something, you can pop the top off and just push the contact close and it should activate the starter or the air compressor or air pump, whatever we're trying to jump, or the horn, fuel pump, that's how you force a relay. Now, most times inside there, the terminals burn. Those little round terminals, let me see if I can point to them. Get my picks in here. So the little round terminal right there, those are the electrodes. That's what touches and makes power. Sometimes you can clean those up with sandpaper as a test and get the relay functioning again. Sometimes they're melted to high hell. Most air compressor relays, they close and they melt. And it burns that compressor up and then blows the fuse in the in the aromatic cars. So so I hope this helps explain what I mean when I say check a fuse to make sure it's not blown, check it for power, also how to jump a relay. So, so again, thanks for viewing my videos. I'm trying to make videos that help. All right, if you got questions or comments, throw them below. I, I try to answer everybody. Um, I love helping people. I know you're out there and, and you're dealing with an issue and you don't know where to turn. I can help you out. All right, so you can hit me up at www.cartechconnect.com. You can email me at diagnosisunlimited at gmail. I'm also on justanswer.com. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Lou Palomino. I don't care. Hit me up. You guys have a good one. Thanks.